there are always a thousand reasons to not do something and there's usually one or two good reasons to do it and a good entrepreneur will hang on and latch on to those one or two good reasons. Welcome to Hustler Stories with Ambika Anand. Our guest today is restauranter Zuravar Kalra. He is the founder of Massive Restaurants, which has over 50 restaurants under its umbrella across the globe. Zuravar, what does the term hustler mean to you? A hustler is, I guess, a maverick. Um, a person or an entity that is willing to um, leave no stone unturned, willing to push the boundaries, push the envelope, roll up their sleeves, get their hands dirty, to ensure that their life's objectives are met. So what is the story of your origin? Like, at what point did you decide you're gonna join the business of food? I think 11, 12, 13, I, I would say even pre-teen years. I obviously don't know what was that moment in time, but I've always only wanted to do this. Somehow I thought that um, there was nothing else I could do. I always knew that I'm gonna work for myself. I always knew that I am going to be an entrepreneur in some way, shape or form. And I always somehow thought, I was actually pretty much sure of, that it would be something to do with food. And I saw my father build some of the best restaurants in India. But I was not happy with the fact that he was building these restaurants for hotels and, you know, Bukhara, Dampuk, the Great Kebab Factory. At one point in time, out of the top five top grossing restaurants in India, three or four were his creations. But he didn't own them. He used to do them for other hotels or for uh, other institutions. The entrepreneur in me saw an opportunity lost. So I just thought that, hey, let me grow up. I'm going to take advantage of his knowledge, of his uh, repertoire, of his goodwill, and build something that he and I will own. Wow, that is so soon. But uh, what was your first venture and how did you go about creating it? I did my MBA from 2001 to 2003 and then I worked in the US uh, for a year. I decided to come back because my father was ailing at that time. He had fallen sick and there were certain things happening with the business that needed my immediate attention. Uh, as a result, I came back in 2004 and I think by the end of that year or maybe early 2005, I started these cloud kitchens. Actually, before that, I started this cart, this, you know, this stall, this kiosk kind of a thing. On the streets, it used to sell Galauti kebab and paratha, and that's it, two things. So one vegetarian kebab, one non-vegetarian kebab, and one type of paratha, and I think we sold some lemonade or something. Small little carts, I opened quite a few of them. It was called the Paratha Company. It was actually my first venture. It was doing pretty well, but it was simply too small scale. It was also on the roadside. It was not something that I could necessarily put my father's name on. It was not something that I could see myself doing for too long. Quality control was becoming a challenge. There were so many other bureaucratic issues. You could place your card in some area, suddenly the police would come and remove it. Uh, there was pollution, there was, you know, you were putting in front of shops and the landlord would have change of mind and shift your location around. It was just challenging, not something I saw myself doing for too long. And anyway, I was always in it for building large scale restaurants. But this was a bootstrapped venture, so fully funded by myself. And it seemed like a good first step. And for all entrepreneurs out there, I think it's always better to start off taking a smaller risk than to go all chips in. Although I've begun to do that as well now, but that's after a few years. Beginning, I think it's always better to be a little more careful and start smaller. So we started that and then of course, uh, I think about a year later, I started this brand called Punjab Grill in a food court format. It was literally food courts uh, all over Delhi and CR. And I think we had one in uh, Lucknow also. And these were small food court kiosks, two, 300 square feet. Again, bootstrap, fully funded by myself. That's how it started. Eventually, of course, Punjab Grill became a large restaurant chain, but it started off in a food court avatar. So uh, take us through some of the mistakes that you made and what were your learnings from it? So initially I think for all entrepreneurs it's about jumping off a cliff and then building the aircraft on the way down. What that means is that there are always a thousand reasons to not do something but usually one or two good ones to actually do something and it's important if you're a true entrepreneur to latch on to those one or two things, not care about the naysayers, not worry about you know the repercussions, not even care about the repercussions. I think that's one way to look at it. I think that's 
been my, uh, it's been at a cellular level the way I think about business. And as a result, uh, I just dived head in. I literally dived head in. I just started expanding. I was, I had so much positivity about, you know, my, my business in general. I thought I can do everything alone. Uh, I knew God is with me. You know, I, all those things were like aligning that I thought, you know, you, you feel sometimes that you're on the you're right invincible. path. You're invincible, invulnerable. And that's all, almost always never the case, right? But you think that way. And you, um, so I, I, you know, really expanded these uh, small uh, food court yeah. kiosks all over the place, all over North India, in Lucknow. And they were doing very well in sales, but there were so many gaps that I realized I didn't have an accounts department of any value. I had two, three accountants working. That really wasn't helping. There were leakages, there were pilferages. Uh, we were not good with our systems and processes at the back end. So I immediately got on, latched onto this really wonderful uh, mentor of mine that to this day remains a mentor, a CA firm. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Goyal, he till today is like, you know, like family to me. And he guided me the right way. I built a stronger department and finally realized that, listen, two, three of these are not making money. Let's shut them down. Let's cut our losses and then try and consolidate the business so that going forward, we have stronger foundation on which to build. So did all of that. So learning really was don't blindly go into business, hedge your risks. Um, don't expand like crazy without knowing, you know, unit economics, whether they're in control or not, and build a strong team. So from one restaurant and from Punjab Grill then, how did you move on to 50 across the world? Oh, that's like a, almost two decades of a journey, one and a half decades of a journey. I think what I learned um, very early on as a result of these mistakes that I made was that invest in a team. Don't be the smartest guy in the room. If you're the smartest guy in the room, then your company is limited by your intelligence and your capability. Always have people better than you working with you. And I think that's the way to build large organizations. If you're the smartest engineer, then the limit of your engineering will yield in the quality of a product. So uh, I learned that early on. I started invested, investing in some good talent, started trying to retain and you know uh, attract new good talent. But overall, the journey has been a combination of good timing, uh, resolve that is uh, fairly firm. So what happened after Punjab Grill? So after opening Punjab Grill in this food court format, I tied up with Amit Berman of Dabur. Uh, he's the chairman of Dabur Foods. And we then built this new company together. We were both partners in that company. And then Punjab Grill took its new avatar. So Punjab Grill became this, um, like a fine dining restaurant. Opened quite a few of them. They were doing very well. I sold that company uh, because I got good valuation. I sold Punjab Grill, I had a small non-compete, finished that, and then I started Massive, which is what my company is called today. And Masala Library was the first restaurant, and that's how the journey began. <laughs> Masala Library became such a immediate runaway success that I didn't even know what happened. First week, I was having no sales. I was getting panicky. I was sitting in Bombay in my restaurant, living in the hotel right opposite, spending all day in the restaurant, leakage is happening, water pipes breaking, electricity not working, AC is completely malfunctioning. But I had complete faith in the product that we had built. It was the most avant-garde rest uh, restaurant in India at that time. Uh, one week, no sales. Second week onwards, phones started ringing off the hook. I had 200 to 300 calls a day. I had a one month waiting period and we literally could not produce enough food or buy enough food to serve our customers. And that's when the whole thing changed. I got confidence. I got a very positive vibe about what we were doing. Let's talk about television. Take us through your experience while shooting MasterChef. It was fantastic. It was my first time on a show of that scale. And it was a big, it, it is a big production, right? It's the biggest TV show of food in India. And I remember my first shoot that I was doing, it was in Umed Bhavan. And huge, the whole hotel was taken over wow. by the production. Huge stress, 100 plus crew. My first scene, I had to memorize some lines. It was an intro. So you had to memorize. Everything else is extempore and you eat your food and then you comment. So there's no learning there. But you had to memorize your lines. And I'm usually, I'm usually a calm person. I'm usually good under pressure. I excel under pressure. I went out there and I nailed my lines. The director came running up at me and looked at my other two co-judges and they were experts. They've done so many of these, right? They're, they're, this is their, they're professionals at it. 
He looked at them and he said, that's how you memorize your lines. I always thought I was a good speaker, a good orator, but that really enhanced my skills significantly more. It developed my confidence. The skill might be there, but the confidence helps you develop that skill even faster. And it was such an in incredible experience meeting these young home cooks and seeing the level of talent that India has. So finally, what's cooking in the future? What are your future plans? Lot of, lot of, lot of things on the burner. Um, just this quarter, we're opening seven uh, restaurants. We're opening 30 cloud kitchens. That's just till December. We have major plans for international expansion. We are very excited about our cloud business as well. Our cloud business has gone from zero to a very large scale in one and a half years. And I think we're one of the few very profitable cloud kitchen businesses in India. So that's become something that of real major scale and it's got us very excited. We're almost in a startup frame of mind with our cloud. But our restaurants also are now uh, growing very rapidly around the world, around India. We're now in about 15 cities. By the end of December, we'll be in about 19 cities of India. So very excited about the prospects. And Cloud Kitchen, which cuisines, apart from Louis Burger, do you focus on? So currently we have Louis Burger and Slice Pizza. By the time this airs, we would have launched our new baby, which is two years in the making, one year of branding alone, uh, called Nashville Fried Chicken. It's a fried chicken brand, very high quality, fried chicken for the future. It's a version to a fried chicken. And is, it's, it, is it air fried? It's not air fried. It, it is fried in oil, but it is, yeah, we don't make any bones about that being the health oriented brand, okay. uh, you know, and it's got, it's got french fries, it's got chicken tenders, it's got wings, it's got fabulous burgers, it's got fried chicken of course from the bone, and, but it's a taste bomb. So on your cheat days, it's something to eat, but I think uh, most of India accepts that you don't need to eat fried food every day, but when you do, you want to eat something that is a flavor bomb. And that's what we built with NFC. It's going to be a game changer. We're so proud of it. We've developed recipes that has taken us two years. We've been thinking about this. We've bought the best equipment. It's scientifically done. It is, uh, it's going to be a tour de force in the fried chicken business. Amazing. Can't wait to taste it. Thank you so much for your time, Zuravar Kaldra. Such a pleasure. Thank you.